Deputy E.G. Marshall. In this tale, we're leaving the supernatural for the natural. Not that the mystery is less deep. This is a story of human beings and the passions and desires that consume and drive them. A story that concerns one of the seven deadly sins. In many ways, the most repulsive of them all. But which of them? Ah, that is the matter of our story. Let Detective Lewis Stein mention only one of them. You listen to me, Tony boy. The more time I spend on homicide, the less I pretend to understand it. I've seen guys knocked off in an argument over a hockey game. Girls who stuck a knife in their husbands because they forgot to bring home the margarine. Candy Hart was doing your little Polly picture out of a chance in the spotlight. Envy is as good a motive for murder as the next one. And murder is what we've got right here. Our mystery drama, The Slick and the Dead, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Russell Horton. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Jovan Collections for Women and for Men. I'll return shortly with Act One. When you say bird, why me? I was getting off a super slab in this week thing, said to me. She got them years on me, man. Come on back to this home, honey. She got the king of fears for a hundred years, Jim Jim, on the side. I'd love to hear that sweet thing say at the end of every life. There is no other one. That's right. There's only something left. Because the king of fears is me all the rest. When you say bird, Anheuser Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Of all the crimes on the police blotter, the most fascinating of all is the crime of homicide. Not alone because the killing of a fellow creature is the most final of all crimes, but because the reasons, the motives, the mysterious why of it are the most complex in all sins against society. For gain, for revenge, for jealousy, for a thousand reasons, including just no plain reason at all, murder one deserves its ranking. In Candy Hart's case, all the basics of how, where, and even when are satisfactorily explained before a story even begins. What we are concerned with is why and who. Watch it, Detective Carbo. Let the boys get the basket out. Oh, sure, Lou. Good-looking chick. Yeah, before somebody wrung their neck. Yeah. What'd you get from the doctor? What you usually get from a doctor, double talk. She was strangled with her own pantyhose sometime in the wee hours of the night. Mm, couldn't pin it any closer than that? He will after the autopsy, sometime early this morning. Well, what time did the maid say she found her? Uh, around noon, when she was making up the rooms. Just walked in and found her, huh? Well, no, not quite. See, that clerk who let her in came on duty then. He wanted to know if she checked out. Why do you want to know that? Want to ask him yourself? He's in a room down the hall. Yeah. All right, nothing more to do here. Uh, she signed in as Ruth Sniffen. Mm. Sounds like a phony. Could be. Her address was phony. And when we checked her purse, we drew a blank. Too little there, if you ask me. Somebody ripped her off? No, yeah, money was there, and lipstick, compact gum, some keys, a pencil, and a couple of hair ribbons. Hair ribbons? Mm-hmm. Hair ribbons. So? Nothing to that funny thing for a dame to be carting around. Why? It's got long hair. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Come to think of it, though, you might have a point. How come? You take my kid, Debbie. She's got this long hair, too, you see, and she takes ballet. So? Did, uh, did you get a good look at that one before they carried her around? Oh, <laughs> sure. She was one look at her legs. I mean, did you notice how muscular they were? Yeah. You know, dancers use ribbons to tie back their hair. Maybe this will give us a lead on who she is. Isn't there anything in her, in her bag? That's the whole point. Nothing. No letters, papers, no credit cards, Social Security, nothing. Tell you what, you go call Chorus Equity. That's the dancers' union. See if they got a Ruth sniffing. I'll take this hotel clerk and see what he knows. What's the name again? Um, you ready for this? Yeah. 
Cabot Lodge. What? <laughs> How's that grab you? I wasn't ready for that. Well, the odds you won't be ready for him either. I, I knew, I, I just knew I should never have registered her. I told Mama that this morning, first thing at breakfast. Why, Mr. Lodge? And uh, is Lodge your real name? Well, of course. Cabot Lodge? Well, not really Cabot. No, no, Albert, actually. Mm. But in my profession, you know, names are so important. Hotel clerk? No, in charge of the desk. I work the middle shift because <sighs> Mama's more or less invalid and needs care. I see. Oh, uh, yeah, of course, I had a legally change all years ago. Now, why was it you told Mama, uh, your old lady, that you should never have registered her? The Admiral Hotel has a reputation second to none. And nothing like this, but nothing has ever happened here. Mm. All right, let's make this simple and quick. I saw the girl. She looked like a nice, clean kid to me. Why wouldn't you check her in? Well, look, I don't want to go into all the problems of running a hotel. But uh, mainly, mainly because she had no baggage. She paid in advance? Well, yes. You asked for it because she had no luggage? No, actually, I see it. Well, if I could reconstruct the scene, Inspector, I... Detective. Uh, oh, I just... Detective, you see, I... It was a little after three. Now, I had taken over early. You see, I had just put my yogurt and my macrobiotic dinner... I'm dieting again at the moment... Away in the fridge and taken over the desk. Oh, the day man is so messy. And I was just, you know, tidying up things when the, this girl came in. Oh, yes, ma'am. May I be of assistance? Could I have a single room, please? Uh, do you have a reservation? No. Oh. And just how long would you desire the accommodation? Just for one night. Mm. See? Oh, yes, yes, we have a very nice room. 14B. How, how much is it? That would be $28, <laughs> plus tax, of course. And nothing cheap, uh, less expensive? Ah, uh, I'm afraid not. All right, that would be fine. Oh, splendid. The Hotel Admiral is delighted to welcome you as a guest. What was that for? To get a boy for your luggage. Oh, I don't need him. I haven't any bags. I just need a place to rest for a while and make some phone calls. No baggage. I'll pay in advance. May I register now? <laughs> Why, of course. And in no sense did I mean to suggest that you... Uh... Oh, it's all right, Mr. Lodge, I see from the desk plate. Yes, that's correct. Now, here's the registration. And I hope we can make you comfortable for your short stay. I'm sure you can. I expect to be comfortable for some time to come. What do you mean by that crack? Well, I haven't the faintest. So she registered, and when you came to work today, she hadn't just spent a couple of hours, she was still here. <laughs> yes, and over her checkout time. When a maid couldn't get into her room? Oh, the maid could have entered immediately with her passkey, except for the protection of our guests, we have instituted an extra lock of the uh, fall kind. You mean as well as the regular latch lock that closes automatically? Mm -hmm. There's another lock that you turn the knob to close from the inside. That's right. And it can only be opened or closed uh, from the outside by key. Ah. So the maid reported both locks shut and called you because the room was supposed to be vacated. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then what did you do? Well, I phoned the room. There was no answer. So then I became a little worried. I went up myself and used my key for the protection lock and we went in and found her. Dead. Yes, the poor little thing. On the floor. And the bed had been slept in just as we saw it? I guess. N nothing was touched. Everything left as it was. All right. Just one more question. You seem to be a very sensitive man, Mr. Lodge. You have any idea why this girl took that room? Well, it could... <clears throat> It could have been an assignation. You know, even in the best-ordered hotel... Even in the Admiral? Well, I shudder to admit it. Do you have any visitors? No, no, not that the hotel knows of. But, but of course, it, it's impossible to check. Does she make any outside calls? Yes, I've prepared a list for you. Here they are. Good. How about incoming calls? No, we have no record of those. Uh, excuse me? No, I'll take them. Detective Stein... Lou, I gotta hand it to you. I gotta make on a DOA. Yeah, who? Her real name is Ruth Sniffin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it seems like Chorus uh, Union here doesn't allow two dancers with the same name, right? So, there was this older dame named Ruth Sniffin at the same time our Ruth Sniffin joined... Tony, do me a favor. I've had enough small talk to last me to my grave. Just get to the point. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. 
You know, an alias. You mean, is it your real name? Oh, oh, yeah, sure. I really am Polly Pitcher. Well, Pauline, to be exact. Mm -hmm. You said you figured your roommate Candy was off for a little weekend world with the producer of your show. Is that right? I don't know. It's a... Oh, sometimes I'm kind of a big mouth. Maybe I should have clammed up. Not with us, baby. I've been paying. No, no, it's all right, Miss Pitcher. You just go right ahead and tell us again why you thought there was something going on there. Well, the way I told you, I'm Chorus Lear. I've done the solo a couple of times when Mel Dance was out, so nobody thought much about it. She sprained her ankle, I'd go right in. And this time... A rehearsal was called, and the word was that Candy would be the one. Not, not that she wasn't good, but... Oh, oh gee, I hate this. Miss Pitcher, let me say something. A girl is dead. This is a homicide. Somebody strangled Candy Hart deliberately, and she didn't die nice. So the nice things have to stop right here. We don't cut any corners anymore. Let's just skip down to the nitty-gritty, which is not nice, but that's where we are. Now, I'll say some of it for you because it is, in fact, just like you say, surmise. Okay? This producer and Candy Hart were making it together. That was the talk, right? That was the talk. All right. What's his name? Hayward Spence. He lives in Eastport, Connecticut. Right. You figured she was going to spend Sunday night with him. Why? Well, Sunday morning when we got up, Candy Hart. Hey, Polly. You with us? Oh, I'm awake, yes. Oh, I have a mother with a headache. Who's the aspirin in the That won't kill what ails me. You got any liquor? Oh, some cooking sherry is all I have. Oh, sure. The All-American Health Bug. What am I doing rooming with an AA? Thanks for the boost, but since I never had to have it, I never had to kick it. Oh, are you going to get with it, Polly? You're going to be an L.C. Ginsmore for the rest of your life. Oh, knock it off. The needle has lost its charm. Who oh, could you use some more sleep? Anything else I can do for you? Yeah. You got a bag I can pack some clothes and stuff in? Well, it's just like I thought I was the one moving out. Oh, I'm not moving out. Just overnight. Nothing permanent like you. Oh, look. Oh, I'm not in all that rush. I won't duck out on you till you have someone to take over for me. Well, maybe it works better the other way, baby. Huh? How'd you like to take over the place and get yourself a roommate to share expenses? Well, it's your apartment. I didn't think that was... Everything's up for grabs at the moment, baby. I could be moving in with someone else. Can you spring me an overnight bag? Oh, I haven't anything until tomorrow night. I, I lent it to Jamie Shepard for the bus tour. She, she'll do that tomorrow night. Oh, great. But you have an overnight bag. The zipper's stuck. Can't get it open. Boy, wouldn't you know. <laughs> What's the heavy day? My future baby doll. You mean our big man? The reason for the rehearsal tomorrow? Are you going into the solo? No hard feelings, Polly. That's only for openers. Spencer may have something uh, going beyond that. Oh, boy, you're playing with fire. You mean Isabel and her fag? The guy is married. You're buying a lot of trouble. Don't you worry. Isabel's out of town, and what anybody doesn't know won't hurt him. We got any shopping bags kicking around? <sighs> the best I could do is a plain old supermarket job. Solid. And after tonight, maybe you won't have to worry about making any moves. Look, I don't want to get out of line, Candy, but... Well, what do you mean? Lots of things are going to be settled by tomorrow morning. I got one thing going for me. And if Spence doesn't come through as advertised, he's in real trouble. You... You make it sound like blackmail. All in the point of view. The way I look at it, I'm just trying to make it easy all around. Guys do marry more than once. What about Bill Pastor? Bill... Oh, he never meant that much to me. Come on, let's dig up that shopping bag. I may be traveling third class this last time around, but you better believe it, baby. From then on, it's first class all the way. As far as you know, when Miss Hart left here, she was headed for Eastport to meet Mr. Spence. That seemed the idea. And she took her whatever she wanted to take with her in a shopping bag? Yes. And that's the last you saw of her? Of course. But you didn't know where exactly she was headed. I brought her to Eastport. 
I, I mean, she called Central Terminal about training. Well, obviously she didn't catch one. She didn't mention anything at all about a rendezvous in New York at the Admiral Hotel. Not to me. Quite sure? Sure. Well, what do you mean? Look, uh, it's maybe a little early in the game. But you do know your rights, don't you, Miss Pitcher? My rights? Yeah, you don't have to answer anything without legal counsel if you don't want to. I don't understand. I have nothing to hide. Nobody said you did. What's got you back up, Tony? Nothing. I just wanted to know where she stood. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's up to you, miss. You will make Candy Hart left here with some overnight stuff in the shopping bag. Hey, Lou, she never said she knew what was in the bag. It's all right, Detective, I did. When I brought her the bag, she had the stuff all laid out to go into it. Night clothes, hair curlers, the wigs. May I complete my question now, Detective Carbo? Yeah, sure, Lou, sure. Miss Hart left here with clothes and effects for overnight in this shopping bag. Now, you thought she was headed for Eastport and a date with Mr. Spence? I did. Now, you had no way of knowing that she might be meeting him here at the Admiral Hotel instead. I've answered that already. No. But she did leave here with the shopping bag. Yes, the one I described. Okay, Miss Pitch. Okay, I guess that's all for now. You wouldn't be planning to leave town suddenly, would you? <laughs> of course not. I'm under contract. Lou, and I... are you kidding? Polly, I, I, I mean, Miss Pitch, you will be doing the solo from now on. I guess we always know where to find you every night in the week, uh... <laughs> Except Sundays. I guess you do. Yeah. And anyway, we got your address. We got your phone number. It's a free world. How can a girl ask for secrets anymore? By me, uh, outside of my work, all she'd have to do is ask anytime she wanted to. By me, anytime I want to, I'll ask. So long, fellas. Be seeing you. You might have that. I'll take the word for the deed. Uh, just in case, uh, you mind if I call sometime, like, uh, Outside business hours? Well, why not? Could be something new in a girl's life. She kind of got me, huh, Tony? Got a little picture, Dan? Okay, Lou. I put in my 8 to 4, 4 to 12, whatever tour I'm on, but off duty, my life is my own. Don't get uptight on me. I'm not sticking my nose in what you do off hours. But I do have to tell you to watch it. I could have fallen for that little damn two years ago myself. That still doesn't mean she's leveling with us all the way. What are you talking about? Tony, the more time I spend on homicide, the less I pretend to understand. I've seen guys knocked off in an argument over a hockey game. Dreams have stuck a knife in their own husband because they forgot to bring home the margarine. Candy Hart was doing Polly Pitcher out of a chance in the spotlight. Envy is as good a motive for murder as the next one. Well, you don't seriously think I'll anything. tell you what I seriously think. You better stop thinking about her as anything but a suspect. And you better get moving to clean this thing up. Now, we're splitting from here on in. You can have this bill passed to the boyfriend that was mentioned. I'll take the Spence guy who looks like he might just be the whole crate of apples. So let's get on the ball. <laughs> yes, Detective, uh... Whatever the name was... Uh, Stein. Oh, yes, that's right, Stein. I'm quite aware that Candy, uh, Miss Hart, is dead. You, you know, I had to appear, appear in front of the entire cast of the musical at rehearsal break the news. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, that why you came to town, Mr. Spence? I beg your pardon? Make the announcement, I mean. Sir, I am in town every weekday. I run an office here. Just because I have one hit doesn't mean I have another project in work. Sure, sure. Now, let's see, uh... Rehearsal was called for four, is that right? That is correct. And uh, we didn't know who the homicide was till around 3.30. Well, I can check with my secretary, but it was shortly after that time that the, uh, the appalling news was transmitted to my office. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it wasn't until I got to the theater for rehearsal that I was told the news. Yeah. What time did you get in this morning, Mrs. Spence? I beg pardon? What train did you take in from Eastport this morning? I... Well, I didn't. I, I drove. Oh. But you found a garage? Yes. Good. And a ticket will show what time you pulled in. That is correct. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I came in yesterday from the country. Oh. As a matter of fact. When was that? 
I, um... Well, it so happens that my wife and children are visiting her parents this weekend. I found myself at loose ends, decided to come into the city. Uh-huh. And what time would that have been? It, uh, uh, in the middle evening after dinner, uh... Say eight or nine ish. My, my garage will know what time I left the car. Yeah, they do. Eight forty seven. Then where did you go? Not that it's any of your business, but to my apartment where I worked until after midnight, went to sleep, came down to my office at the usual time, around uh, ten AM. Got a door man at your apartment? No. Actually I own a brownstone. I have the bottom floors rent out the top. And you say you were alone. I was. Did you make any phone calls? Did you see anybody during the evening? I made several phone calls, but got no answer. No, I didn't see anyone. So you were all alone from, say, 9 p.m. until at least somewhere after 8 the following morning? Unfortunately, yes. Sure, sure. I mean, you're an intelligent man, Mr. Spence. I mean, uh, you can see where all this is headed, right? Naturally. Now, Candy Hart... Why was she suddenly packing a bag to come and see you in Eastport while your wife and family were away? What? Was it because she was getting that solo spot instead of the regular girl who filled in? Has Polly been giving you some kind of a story about me and Miss Hart? I've done a little checking around. I had to warn you there was a lot of talk. It doesn't mean a thing. A theater company was just a gossip like a family. As a small village, so Candace Hart was an employee, a talented one, but nothing more. Is that why you invited her up for the weekend or uh, for Sunday night? Who said I did that? As a taxi service meets all the New York trains, they got an office that side of the track. My information is you drove in with your white caddy, license number uh, UV557, in time to meet the 1205 from New York. Now, you seemed annoyed there was no one on it. You went over to Mario's place for a couple of snorts till the next train. When no one was on that for you, you drove off and went, uh, where? You seem to be doing all the telling. Why don't you finish? That's all I got. The rest you told me. You came to New York. I'll give you a bracket at 12 to 4 a.m. Were you at the Admiral Hotel during those hours? I was not, sir, nor to the best of my belief, except to have a drink in the bar waiting for a train. Have I ever been anywhere? In the Admiral Hotel. All right, so much for who at the moment. It wasn't you. Now, another big question you might be able to answer. Yes. Why? Why would anyone want to murder her, and why did you take a room in the hotel? Think it over, Mr. Spence. And remember, like I said in the beginning, you don't have to answer anything without a lawyer's advice. <laughs> murder, there is most always motive. Not the casual hit and run of the mugger, the accident of panic, the mindless menace of a gun maliciously discharged into a crowd. Candy Hart's murder was motivated. By what? Jealousy? Fear of blackmail and a broken family life? Those are all we know so far. Either would be enough, but there are others still to consider. When I return shortly with Act Three. While Detective Lewis Stein was questioning Haywood Spence, Detective Tony Carbo was questioning a man whose name had arisen only obliquely so far in the investigation, but a man whose testimony would prove to be surprisingly illuminating since it introduced a whole new element into the case. An enigmatic young man named Bill Pastor. I'm Detective Tony Carbo, Mr. Pastor. Come in. I'm uh, trying to drag you down to the precinct. As I couldn't locate you. Well, I was on the road. I just got in. Dispatcher gave me the message. What's the rap? There's no rap. Just a couple of questions about a girl named Candy Hart. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you knew her? Yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know what's happened to her? I can read, can I? To the afternoon paper by now. Yeah. So I had to hear about it that way. Uh, I gathered from this picture you had, um, you had a sort of thing for Candy. Oh, let's, let's get that straight. I wanted to marry her. 
I'll try to dirty it up. Ease off, man. Nobody trying to dirty it up. I'm only doing a job. Yeah. You want it the hard way? Okay. Where were you between 12 midnight last night and, say, 4 o'clock this morning? Zogged out. You want to make that clear? I was sleeping. I had a whole freight out of here from Boston. 6 o'clock this morning, I just dead-headed back. Okay. You can check it out if you want. I already have. Not that it matters. Uh, when was the last time you were in touch with Candy Hart? I saw her uh, a few days ago. She, she gave me my walking papers. Mm-hmm. How come? Uh, and then he... Uh, well, it's the difference anyway. Who fights it, you all? I wasn't good enough for her. Something she needed me. You want to clear that up? Yeah. She called me last night. What time? Mm, around six. From where? I don't know. First off, I thought it was from out of town, from from, uh, from that Spencer's place. Yeah, what did you think of second off? <sighs> Nothing, because I got the kiss off. You want it all flat foot? You can have it, with my compliments. I still can't figure it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how are you, baby? Where are you? Where? Never mind that for the moment. I need help. Oh, what am I here for? You got it. It's pretty crazy, Bill. I just didn't know who else to turn to. Uh, I like that. You wouldn't. I mean, whatever I say goes no further. <laughs> you just have to ask. I'm asking. So you can bet it, not on your wife. <laughs> okay. Now, here's what I need to know. If a person, I mean, if someone has a sack full of dough in that small bills kind of worn, oh, could they be traced? Uh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, kid. What, what are you mixed up in? Bill, don't ask questions. Just give me answers. Well, how would I know? You know why? Oh, I know it's not like that with you anymore, but you do have, like, a connection. Uh, listen, 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 where are you? Uh, let me come up and talk to you. No, first answer me. Okay, okay. The answer is, I don't know. I don't know where they came from, do you? No, but I, uh, I can guess, and they're, well, uh, they're not legal. Out of it? No. Uh, lifted stone? Not exactly. How small denominations? Five. Tens, twenties, a few hundreds. Not you. <sighs> well, uh, uh, what do you want me to say, Candy? I don't know. I've been up the river. I don't want to buy it again. It could be okay, but if it was me, I I wouldn't try to pass it. What would you do with it? Broker it, like, like, you know, fence it. Those boys know how to spread it. What would that cost me? Hmm. How much you got? Never mind that right now. Let's say it was a hundred thousand. Oh, uh, well, with no connections, you'd be lucky to keep maybe uh, 25%. And if I had connections like you? Candy, can, can, even if I had it, I wouldn't touch it. Now, you listen to me. Whatever you got to stake, forget it. If it's the wrong side of the law, it is worth nothing. Turn it in. Now, look, you want me to help? Tell me where you are, and I'll come up and we'll work it out. Forget it, Bill. I never had money like this in my life. And I'm hanging on to it from hell or high water. Candy. Candy, honey, believe me, you're making a mistake. Candy. Oh, how can you be so crazy and stubborn? And that though, she hung up on me. And you've got no idea where she was calling from. No, I tried to trace her through that uh, roommate of hers, but she never gave me the time of day anyways. You know, I wouldn't press your luck, loser. You keep your mouth off this picture. Like that, huh? You better make that clear. Nah, what's the use? You name me loser, it's my middle initial. I wish you better luck. Polly's a nice kid. It's just out of my class. Mm Mm-hmm. But Candy wasn't. She let me know it often enough. We might have made it if I could have got it down to earth. You know, sometimes I wanted to drag her there with my bare hands and knock some sense into her. Johnny, I've been looking for you. What are you doing in here? I'm looking through this morning's printouts from the teletype. Lou, read this. Hmm? Friends of the scribe Gottschalk. 
convicted counterfeiter and forger of oil paintings, booked today as the perpetrator of the recent theft of the famous Whistler from the Flaxenheim Museum. Yeah, he was picked up while trying to extort extra ransom money for the Whistler canvas after Rudolf Schneer, the curator of the museum, had already paid the first demand for $100,000. Well, I still don't see... Yeah, no, no, hold it. Listen, listen. Gottschalk claims he never received the first $100,000. That the shopping bag supposed to contain the money had been switched for one resembling it, containing articles of women's clothing, a hair curling machine, and a tape recorder. That's what Candy got the dough she was talking about to her boyfriend. And why she ducked her appointment with Spence and holed up in the hotel. How? <laughs> she can't tell us. All right, that leaves Gottschalk. We'd have got him. We're going to have a few words with that shakedown artist. Supposing we just go over it again, friends, and this time let's do a little singing. That told you the truth. I want to know how that girl got the money. Friends, Gottschalk, whatever your name is. I like better the Frank. I'm an American citizen. Yeah, you were like you stood out of the clean. I still am, even if I cannot vote. Frank, if you don't come clean with me, there are a lot of things you're not going to be able to do for a long, long time. This isn't just an extortion rap anymore. It's maybe the big M. I have nothing to do with murder. Okay, convince me. Play fair with me. I'll give you all the breaks I can. All right. I stole the whistler. I cut it out of the frame. It's such a pity to deface a masterpiece. But it was only a little. So I arranged my ransom terms. It's simple to get the picture back. On a road from me, the curator is to take $100,000 in small bills contained in an ordinary shopping bag to Central Terminal. He is to go to the reading room, lock the 463, which he will find open, and put himself a bag. Then I know he does not spy on me. He must sit with his back to the lockers for two hours, not to move, not to speak to anyone, not even to look around. But he is warned he will be watched every moment. Mm hmm. You had accomplices? No. I work alone. But how is she to know that? So I wait at the station. I see him come in. He's a small man, not so steady on his feet, you know. All of a sudden, from another direction, comes this girl running and bumps into him. Well, my heart is in my mouth. Both of them stumble and fall the shopping bag with them. Ooh, well, not the money fell out. No, 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 God's dunk. I see them get to their feet. They are talking, but I cannot hear anything except all of a sudden the girl cries out, get out of here before I call the police. Oh, but that gave you the heaves. Well, my heart stopped, but he calmed her down somehow, handed her her bag, and brought the shopping bag to the box, put it in, and then he went and sat. I moved to get the bag, made one look to check the contents. Now, that, wait a minute. I'm ahead of you. She had a bag, you said. She had a bag. You mean a shopping bag? That is right. And when they knocked each other over, somehow the bags got uh, uh, switched, right? Right. The bag in the box had only some ladies' undergarments in it. Mm, it must have given you a real jolt. Uh, believe me, believe me. But I was not getting her get away with the money so easy. I locked the box. I turned to look for her. And you followed her to the hotel where she checked in, bided your time, then went up to her room, got in by some gig or other, took your money, stopping only long enough to strangle her so she couldn't... No, 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 I did not. Under the locker where the police picked you up. I had it off her. I looked around. I couldn't find her. I thought perhaps there's another bag in her bag. I could find an address, some name to know who she was. Please. Please, you must believe me. I am not a murderer. I did not kill her. Please give me a chance. The odds are better than you deserve. There are three others who have just as good motives as you. Now, all I've got to do is figure out which one of you four it was. Now, if... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. My odds are wrong. Now, you know something, Frank? There's only one person who could have murdered Candy Hart. Just as a matter of interest, and for the fun of it, are you, as the audience so often is, way ahead of our detectives and their story? Could you name the murderer and his or her motive now? Have you perhaps even known from the beginning? Or... 
Would you like now, before we complete our story, to pick your own candidates? Now, for those of you who feel you know or have guessed, here is the solution. I, I don't know what possessed me to do it, except that, well, I can't, I can't expect you to understand. But my vacation was coming up next Monday, and as usual, I just have no money. Would I be able to travel to see the world instead of being chained all day, listening to Mama's whimperings and complainings? And, and then suddenly this blessed chance. No. No, I should say this terrible temptation. When the girl came in with the bank full of money. Yes, I, yes. She was dusty as, as if she had fallen and all disheveled, and I really... I, well, she was just definitely not a candidate for the Admiral Hotel. Well, I was thinking of telling her that we were all filled up when she put down her bag to register. Oh, Lord, help me. It tipped over, and the newspaper covering it at the top slipped aside, and I saw it was full of money. So you let her in? Yes, and later that night, you went up and used your pass key to get into her room. She she woke up and recognized me and turned on the light. I I offered to share, but she was impossible. She said she would scream her head off if I didn't get out. For the first time in my life, perhaps, I, I lost my head. I snatched at anything to gag her, and somehow it was around her throat. And then before, before I knew it, I, I, she was dead. Well, I had nothing to lose. And I took the money. I thought I could get away with it. I knew that money was stolen, but somehow, I, I don't understand. Somehow, you guessed. And the worst thing of all, I just don't know how we're going to break the news to Mama. <laughs> I understand all the way myself, Tony. How did you pick it? Well, first off, I couldn't see our desk clerk large ever letting anyone into the hotel with our baggage, a woman especially. And second, once we knew the money was involved, I figured that let Spence and Pastor out of the picture. And little Polly, you never figured, was in it at all. <laughs> you said it. Now, as for Gottschalk, if he killed Candy and took the money, why try a second holdup? But most of all, uh, it's my, uh, Total recall. Like how? <laughs> you notice those special protection locks at the hotel? Mm-hmm. The regular fault type. Right. Protection for the guests from the inside. But the only way to close that special lock from the outside was to have a key. And the only person who had that key was the hotel clerk. <laughs> Elementary, my dear detective. Stein. Now, what am I supposed to say? Amazing? You didn't think I didn't twig that right from the beginning? It's just that I couldn't figure that mama's boy having any reason for... <laughs> well, I guess we're never too old to learn, huh? So there it is. All wrapped up, finished, ended. As you guessed it, if you did, well and good. And if you didn't, there's always the enjoyment of a puzzle slowly unraveling, a mystery becoming clear. I hope you enjoyed it as a change of pace and as a reminder that the order of natural events is frequently just as chilling as the supernatural. I'll be back shortly. Pick up a pick up. Pick it up and take it home. picked up a few loose ends. The extortion money was, of course, returned. And while Mrs. Lodge temporarily went into incredible shock, she eventually, in spite of her infirmities, imagined or otherwise, lived out her years quite happily. Her son received a life sentence, but in a strange way made his own adjustment to imprisonment which he finds has many things in common with the hotel business. 
And Detective Tony Cargo is married. To guess who? Our cast included Russell Horton, Rosemary Rice, Mandel Kramer, Josephine Premise, and 